Okay, hey everybody, how we all doing today? Teching and Barry back again with a My Hero Academia video! Wow, I know, right? It's been a while, but yeah, check it out. There's the logo right there, My Hero Academia. The thing is, I really wanted to wait for the perfect moment in the story to talk about this, right? With the second war going on right now, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. So, you know, I was like, all right, I'm going to wait until that moment, the moment of absolute dread, the point of no return, the moment when Horikoshi has us by the balls. And it's like, all right, then I'll make a video about it. So this will be My Hero Chapter 362 which actually came out like two weeks ago at this point, but it's okay, Shonen Jump was on break last week, I'm getting around to it, it's alright. Uh, but there is a pretty heavy spoiler with this one, so I'm going to give a spoiler warning, gonna give you a couple of seconds to really acclimate to that, if you're uh, not caught up. Um, I'll take this time to address while I'm not wearing the jacket, you know, a lot of people are like, WHERE'S THE JACKET?! The jacket is a one-piece jacket, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wear a one-piece jacket very well when I'm talking about another series that isn't one piece. Which means only one thing, I have to travel the world and collect the seven magical jackets. Each one for one of the greatest manga series in the world. So there's one for One Piece, there's one for JoJo's, there's one for My Hero, and I'll let you fill out the other four on the, the seven mighty jackets. And when they all come together, you could summon a giant jacket and he could, you know, answer your wish as long as it's jacket related. Alright, we good? Alright, awesome. So, chapter 362, uh... Hey guys! What do Bakugo and Ace have in common now? Ah? Uh, ah? Uh, Bakugo? Ace? Bakugo? Ace? We all know what happens to Ace in One Piece. Guess what happened to Bakugo? Uh, uh. This is just the whole video. It's like 25 minutes of me just like... <laughs> okay, so... Oh no, Ace literally fell in the trash. Okay, well, okay. So, um... Is Bakugo dead? Let's, let's address that. Um... Horikoshi already kind of did a fake out with this once. I don't know if it was a fake out, but during the first war, Bakugo got hit pretty hard. And there was a whole chapter that was called, you know, uh, Bakugo Rising. And it's like this big epic moment where Bakugo actually steps in to save Izuku. And it was like the turning point for his character. And he got skewered by, uh, by Shigaraki, right? And it's like, holy crap, did Bakugo just die? And uh, he didn't. You know, he, he got stabbed pretty bad, but he got out of that okay. And now we're sort of doing the exact same thing again in this chapter. Because if you remember that chapter, it was filled with a lot of eternal monologues from Bakugo. And just like, you know, why am I jumping in front of Izuku to save him? I didn't even realize I did it until it was too late. Shaw! And then he got stabbed. You know, and here... We're kind of doing the same thing, except we're just ratcheting it up to a whole new level here, where now we're getting very somber flashbacks with Bakugo. And we're getting a moment where Bakugo is like, his spiritual self is seeing the spectral image of uh, All Might that's inside of One for All. And he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I always wanted you to sign this holographic secret rare um, first edition All Might trading card that I have. And it, he always had it with him in his hero outfit to give him strength, you know, because both Izuku and Bakugo growing up, they were huge fans of All Might. And um, and the very last scene of the chapter, Shigaraki attacks him and uh, he literally has his heart ripped out. I mean, there's really no other way to look at it. Uh, I can't show you the panel, but I'm looking at it right now. And he looks, he looks pretty damn dead. Um, now, here's the thing, though. I, honestly, I don't think the question is, at the end of this chapter, is Bakugo dead? Because he looks pretty f***ing dead, alright? Like, there's really, like, if you look at the panel, he's on the ground, one of his eyes is, like, completely gone. It's not gone, but it's, like, whited out. It's like he has no pupil in one of his eyes. His other eye is just glazed over. He's blood splurting out of his mouth. And, oh yeah, by the way, his f***ing heart has been ripped out of his body, alright? So, with that all in mind, um, I'm going to say he is dead. The big question now is, can Quirks bring the dead back to life? So, Aerie, uh, if we can get Aerie in here with the rewind quirk, is that gonna, like, bring his heart back? Is that how that works? Um, what about the second user of One for All? What about his quirk? 
Could that do anything? Uh, I don't know, but Bakugo looks pretty damn dead right here. I don't really think you can get worse than that unless his head was cut off, but... You know, well, I don't know. We to Shigaraki next chapter. He might be like, well, he looks pretty dead, but I want to make damn sure, you know? Because Shigaraki, in this chapter, he's just like, you know, why am I so... Like, like, this is just a peon compared to me. This person doesn't even have the power of one for all. You know, so why am I so hellbent on eliminating him out of nowhere? And so, in the next chapter, Tomura, he might actually go up to, to Bakugo and be like... Yeah, I'm not sure. I better make damn sure he's dead and, you know, just bring down the gauntlet even harder, you know? And it's like Bakugo's reduced to, like, little chunks on the ground, and it's just like, all right, all right, crap, we're going with this. Okay, where's this going from here? But uh, honestly, before we get to that, I really want to talk about Sun Eater really quick. Can we just talk about how freaking cool Amajiki is? And I'll be honest with you, I mean, like, I've always liked Amajiki more than Bakugo. Bakugo has never really ranked that high for me in terms of My Hero Academia characters. You know, like, I like him a lot more than I did at the beginning of the story when he was just a straight-up bully to Izuku, and that was his entire character. So I really like the character development that he's gone through throughout the story. Um, but I just like Sun Eater more. I like his personality. I like his design. I like his quirk, you know? And so... Honestly, in the last few chapters, with the big three getting involved to fight, because everybody else is kind of wounded, and the big three show up, and they're like, it's our time to shine. I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, oh, please, Horikoshi, do not kill Amajiki. Please don't kill Amajiki. And then the last chapter was all about Amajiki, and I'm like, oh, oh no! Oh, no! Please, God, no! And then I'm like, oh, boy, this is gonna be a thing, isn't it? Like, he's gonna give it his all, he's gonna give it his best, he's gonna go plus, 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 super, ultra, he's He's gonna make the giant ass plasma cannon, which by the way, I don't even know how that works. I don't care. I guess if you take the combination of en enough animal traits, throw them together, you can make a plasma cannon. I guess that's cool, right? Anyway, they go on this long thing about how Mirio is explaining his quirk uh, manifest, and like, dude, your quirk has no upper limit, literally. As long as you eat something and you have it inside of you, you can literally make anything, like any number of combination. You can combine one or two things together, you can combine 50 things together. Literally, it doesn't matter. And also, when you think about it, like, Amajiki, the only uh, activation requirement for his quirk is he has to eat something that is the animal that he turns into, right? So, if he eats some beef, he can summon a cow hoof, you know what I mean? So, it's very, very powerful and ultimate multifaceted, okay? So, honestly, we went through that giant list last time, and let, let me just pull up that chapter really quick. Um, and so a lot of the- I, I really wish Horikoshi would have just explained all of the things that go into the plasma cannon. He kind of does, but like everything is kind of covered with it. You can't even see what the damn thing kind of looks like. It's like Amajiki summoning this giant, like, eldritch, like, Lovecraftian demon from his body that's like in the shape of a cannon. But there's like octopus tentacles and like, you know, like insect legs and wings like poking out of it or whatever. And so, let's see. Uh, we have Snapping Turtle, we have Locusts are in it, we have um, Plantains, does that say Plantain? I don't know. Puffer Whale, Puffer Fish is in it. Uh, puffer Whale, that's a thing from Torico. Uh, a Zebra Tarantula, a Dragon Fruit. Alright, he's just combining everything together and that somehow makes a Plasma Cannon. I don't know. I mean, there are animals and plants, by the way, in the wild that do explode. There's, uh, for Ant Facts, we actually covered an ant that will explode if it's, like, encounters, like, stress or danger. And I also recently read about a, uh, a plant. It's, like, a tree that, I think it's in Africa, and when the, the tree's, uh, fruit gets ripe, they explode in order to get the seeds to spread, and that's just how they pollinate or how they spread their, their, their seeds around to grow more trees, I guess. Like, the, the, the fruits get to a certain point and then just explode off of the side of the tree okay so with that in mind like i guess it's possible if you combine the dna of a snapping turtle and a zebra tarantula and a dragon fruit and a couple of other things yeah you make a plasma cannon okay i don't care look plasma cannons are pretty damn cool i'm not gonna complain how amajiki did it but i was worried that the dude was gonna die because it's like oh man this is his epic moment he summons the giant cannon he fires it it takes a big chunk out of uh shigaraki but then he's like did you think that was enough to kill me and then he's like amajiki He's like, oh, no, 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 no. And then he just grabs him and then just, like, decays him. And then that's the end of the chapter. So um, that doesn't happen. Bakugo dies. And that's sad. I'm not going to say it's not sad. But I'm like, 
Woo! Amajiki lives another day! Sun Eater! Sun Eater! Yeah! Okay, cool. And also, by the way, if we're just talking about hero names alone, Amajiki's hero name, Sun Eater, is way cooler than Bakugo's. Bakugo's, I mean, Dynamite is cool if it was just Dynamite, and then it was like Explosion, Murder God, something Dynamite. I mean, it's just too edgy. I'm sorry, Bakugo, but it's a choice between Amajiki and you. I'm just gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna go with you dying. I'm sorry. I love how this video is just turning into me like, oh, Bakugo's dead. Ooh, dodged a bullet there, right? Amajiki could have went. Anyway, um, so I just wanted to bring that up. And so the attack hits him. It hits Shigaraki. It does a big amount of damage to him. But you know it's not going to do. This dude literally took intercontinental ballistic missiles being shoved down his throat at, like, point-blank range. Like, seven of the damn things. And he was able to survive that. He took all of, uh, all of, uh, Star and Stripe's attacks, like, fist bump the earth and, like, getting shot. He's already been shot with lasers, you know what I mean? So, I didn't think this was going to be able to kill him. And, uh, he even mentions as he emerges from the smoke, like, do you think an attack like that would be enough to kill All Might in his prime? No? Well, it ain't taking me out, you know what I mean? So, it's like, I get it. I didn't think Amajiki was able, gonna be able to kill him. But who knows? Maybe if Amajiki, if there's no limit to his quirk, all right, make more of those then, you know? Get, like, a granola bar, like a power bar that has all the different ingredients because is there a minimum requirement to how much food he has to eat? Like, for example, if Amajiki were to eat, like, a small little piece of hamburger, like a little, like, one ounce of hamburger, like this much, would he be able to turn into a, an actual cow? Would he be able to summon all the traits of a cow just from that one little amount, that one little sample? Because if that's the case, you could literally make specially made granola bars that just take like zebra tarantula, dragon fruit, little little bits and pieces and mush it all together and just have him eat that. And then he could just like plasma cannon, plasma cannon, plasma cannon, just make all the plasma cannons, you know? And so maybe, I don't know, maybe he could do that. That quirk is so badass. Okay. So, um, anyway, after the plasma cannon hits, it, like, you know, shoots a laser straight out of the, uh, the floating UA area that they have, and then that fires into the city, so that probably, probably wiped out a few buildings or two, but that's pretty cool. So that's just the first half of the chapter. Pretty much after that occurs, it's an all-out melee, where Lemillion and Sun Eater and Mirko is there, and Hado, and, uh, actually, wait, hold on, Hado is, Hado is not her hero name, right? Hado, no, Nijere Hado, that's just her real name. Do we know Hado's hero name? I don't think we do. Okay, I'm not going to check on it because I feel like you guys will just let me know, but I don't think we know Nejire Hado's uh, hero name. Okay, it should be Periwinkle because her hair is like Periwinkle. Let's just go. Let's just call her hero name Periwinkle. I'm pretty sure she doesn't have one. Let me know, but I, I don't think she does. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we have Bakugo there, and he's just like stunned in the background. Like Best Genus is trying to like make sure he doesn't go, and he's just there like bleeding, and he's like, I gotta go help the battle. I gotta go win. And so meanwhile, Lemillion and everybody's just laying into Shigaraki. Miriko's there, like, just trying to bring him down after Amajiki's attack. And then Bakugo just, like, blips and then just charges at him and then launches an explosion. And he's also able to dodge Amajiki. Not Amajiki. He's able to dodge Shigaraki in the process, right? So Best Genus is there, and he's like, whoa. Bakugo's, like, really heavily injured, and yet he's still able to dodge the attacks. What's going on? So the narrator comes on, uh, thankfully, and explains a little bit more detail about Bakugo's quirk. So the whole idea of Bakugo's quirk uh, is that he, you know, takes the sweat, the nitroglycerin sweat, into his sweat glands in his palms, and then that's where the explosions come from. Now, the new technique he's been using, Cluster Bomb, basically uh, condenses the sweat in, like, large clumps or large, like, orbs or balls into his sweat glands. The problem is when you do that, the sweat glands are strained because they're like kind of like, you know, like over capacity or whatever. So I guess the explanation is that the sweat is going to go throughout the body trying to find a way to escape and that results in explosive movement, but it's also putting a tremendous strain on his body in the process, okay? Because I guess there's like explosions happening like inside of his body. And it's very, very similar to whenever Izuku used to use One for All and the explosions happened inside of his arms, like firecrackers going off inside of him. Kind of the same thing that Bakugo is dealing with right now. So that was a nice little parallel that Horikoshi explained, like, oh, okay, so now it's like, you know, Izuku. Bakugo are both dealing with the same pain, the same injuries, the same kind of ability, right? And so Izuku, I mean, uh, Bakugo's here taking all this damage at once, and he's just like, 
Tell me, Izuku, will I reach you someday? And then all these attacks are happening. We see a glimpse of the second user of One for All. And this is... This chapter really does explain that, yeah, there is a connection between the two. Now, a lot of people, there were a lot of theories around there because Bakugo does look a lot like the second user. So I've heard theories, everything from like, oh, that must be Bakugo's grandfather or great-grandfather, depending on the generations, or maybe even great-great-great-grandfather. I've heard theories that the second user is actually Bakugo, but he time-traveled into the future or something like that, or in the past, I guess. You know, I've heard all these theories out there. Um... My, my opinion on it was always kind of like, yeah, there does seem to be a similarity between them. They might be related, but remember, like, the second user lived, like, over a hundred years ago. You know what I mean? So he might not be Bakugo's, like, direct ancestor. He might be, like, his distant cousin or uncle or great uncle or something. Like, there, there might be a family resemblance or a family, uh, like, maybe a quirk resemblance. Maybe that member of the, uh, well, I guess, hmm. Okay, here's the thing. Because we have a little bit of a hint on what the second user's quirk is. We don't know for certain, but we have a hint. So when Izuku was racing toward the mainland, he was about to activate the second's quirk. But, but then the second showed up, and he's like, Whoa, hold on there, Skippy. <laughs> hold on there, buddy. Uh, you were about to activate my quirk. And Izuku's like, Yeah, I was. He's like, Listen... We've talked about this. Like, that should only be used in a last-ditch effort, like a trump card kind of situation, okay? Now, Izuku needed to get to the mainland as fast as possible, so he was about to use the second's quirk. Now, Izuku already knows what the second quirk is, so it had to, therefore, be something, just by the logic of when he was using it, it had to be a quirk that would allow him to reach the mainland faster. So, and also the second user goes on to say that like, you know, my, my quirk was powerful enough when I was alive, but now that it's been, it's the one quirk in one for all that's been built up the most. Because remember the first user, um, the first user's quirk, the brother of all for one, uh, only had the quirk to like pass the quirk on to somebody else. And then the stockpiling quirk that all for one gave him, you know what I mean? So he didn't have a quirk that had power really. It's like the whole point of the first quirk is that it created the stockpiling effect and the transferring effect for all for all, all, one for all, right? Okay. So the first quirk that actually has real power behind it was the seconds that has now been added over the, over a century now, the decade decades and decades so you have all these other all this time for this quirk to build up so let's let's assume because the second user has gauntlets as well very similar to bakugo's gauntlets so let's just assume it was the same quirk and it just passed down through the generations then bakugo got it or maybe if it's not exactly the same quirk it's a very similar quirk okay maybe in, not instead of nitroglycerin maybe there was like another another way the second user could summon explosions or something like that or maybe like fire jets or something like jet burn or something like that would be maybe the name of that quirk who knows so after added through the years it's very possible that if Izuku activates that quirk now, let's say it is like that. Let's say the, the second's quirk could summon like a really powerful flame or like a like an expulsion of like gas or something and like it, it could explode or okay. If Izuku used it now, it might be like a literal rocket. It might be like an actual, like the space shuttle, like three, two, one, we have liftoff. It might be something like on that level. And so Izuku's like, if I activate the second user's quirk, I could rock it. I could get to the mainland in like 0.2 seconds flat. You know, if it's like the power of like a, a freaking space shuttle going off or something, I could just zip to the mainland right like that. And then the second user's like, don't do that because you won't be able to control it. It might ruin your body and you might fly way past where you're trying to go. You know, if you're moving that fast with that much propulsion, you know what I mean? So... That might be the second's quirk, and he might be related to Bakugo. I don't think he's like Bakugo's like great great grandpappy or something like that, but there's probably some family relation there. And because of that family relation, that's why Tomura is so hellbent on like killing him. Why, you know, AFO inside of him is just like, you know, this is somebody that needs to be eliminated. Then there's the whole scene where Bakugo in like his spirit world is like encountering the spirit of All Might. So now it's a question of like Okay, because Bakugo is maybe related to the second user of One for All, maybe he can enter the world of One for All? Or if we are going along with the time traveling aspect, are we going to get time travel involved in My Hero now? Okay, look, I love science fiction. 
Okay, I, I, I love science fiction. Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. I actually have a Back to the Future shirt. I should have wore that one instead. But um, so if we're going to go with a time traveling quirk, I'm not going to say no to that. You know what I mean? Like, it's already been mentioned that quirks have gotten stronger and stronger and they're reaching that quirk singularity. So if you're going to reveal that there was some kind of time traveling quirk at some point, like maybe not even now, but like there's somebody in the future where quirks are really powerful and they've gotten so broken that somebody awoke to a time traveling quirk and then travels back in time and like takes Bakugo to the past or something like I doubt that's what happened. But like if it did go down that way, if Horikoshi explained it properly, I guess I'd be okay with it. I'm just really not on board right now. Anyway, Bakugo has a moment where he's seeing a visage of All Might, and he's talking about, like, the ultra-rare card he has. Like, I would like you to sign this, All Might. And then it's just, the next scene is Lemillion, Hado, Amajiki, Mirko, all raining blows down on Shigaraki to get him to let Bakugo go. Bakugo gets hit right in the chest. He gets sent flying. And we have, oh, it's a, a heartwarming scene, or a heartbreaking scene of... Uh, Bakugo's mom and his dad there and it's like beginning to rain and so Bakugo's mom is like oh that boy hates the rain and then the last scene is like best genus just being like his heart oh dear lord and then he's on the ground like just dead all right so I wasn't kidding about Ares Rewind like can she like bring the dead back to life her quirk's ability is literally to just reverse the flow of time in certain like localized areas Maybe she could. I don't know. Uh, what other quirk? Uh, could the second quirk be time travel? I, I don't know. That's another thing. Like, like Izuku's running to the to the mainland. Maybe he activates the second and he, like, blips out of existence and then time travels there. I, I don't know. Or I don't know. I don't know. But I, I will say that at the end of this chapter, 362, Bakugo is, like, dead. Okay? So if you want to bring him back from the dead or if you want to do something to, like resuscitate him, rewind, you know, a cork makes a new heart, gives him a heart, make a clone of him. I don't know, but, like, he's pretty straight up dead here, okay? So, there's a few angles we can take it. I just hope it doesn't really kill the drama, you know what I mean? Of just, like, uh, oh, Baku goes dead. It's okay. Airy, rewind. Okay, he's back. He's like, wow, that was close. Like, I and Aerie's not even there right now. I mean, they're not going to bring a little kid into this massive war zone, you know what I mean? So, and honestly, also, she just used the quirk to bring Lamillion's quirk back, the permeation quirk. So she has to, like, gather up energy with her rewind in order to use it, and she just used it on Lamillion. So I don't think rewind's going to be an option here. Yeah, I don't know, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, not looking too good for old Bakugo, but, um... Hey, let me know down below how you feel about it. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm just really happy Amajiki. If Amajiki can make it through this battle, then I'm happy with that. Um, and I guess in the next chapter, let's try to maybe explore a little bit on the relation between Bakugo and the second user. Uh, I, I bet you dollars to donuts in the next chapter of My Hero, we're going to have a scene where Izuku's like still at sea and he's approaching the mainland. And he just has like maybe danger sense activates or something. And he's just like, I sense something horrible just happened. And then Izuku arrives and he's just like, oh, Bakugo. And then he releases his ultimate power. I don't know. I don't know. But um, it, it's very possible that Bakugo might need to die in order for Izuku to realize his true potential. Might be something along those lines. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's the video. Thanks, you guys, for watching. It was a pretty intense one. Now let's move on to Komodo Dragon Facts. And let me tell you, this one, this one's also pretty damn intense. Alright, so today's episode is going to be on how Komodo dragons mate. Yup, alright, so, um, hmm. Well, their mating season is between May and August, so we're getting near to the end of the mating season. They lay their eggs in September, typically. Uh, as with a lot of other, you know, animals during mating season, the males can be very uh, agitated, very uh, pissed off all the time. So uh, they will often compete with each other for a particular female, so they'll, like, wrestle and claw the shit out of each other. Um, there's a thing that they do where before a battle, a Komodo dragon may very well vomit or defecate. 
So, like, it's time for the Komodo dragons to square off for, like, this mating ritual or whatever, and then they just puke all over the place. I, I'm not sure if that's because the Komodo dragons are nervous, you know, or if it's just, like, a probably a deterrent factor because no one wants to go near, like, it's like, oh, man, you just shit yourself. I'd be like, yeah, you want to fight me now? I'm like, no, and then just leave, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the ultimate way to get out of a fight when we're actually thinking about it, but hey, the Komodo dragons go ahead with it. Um, it's after the, you know, the winner is, is, is proven and it's like, okay, there's the male winner and then there's the female and, uh, it, it gets rough, ladies and gentlemen, it gets rough. There's a lot of clawing, there's a lot of blood, um, yeah, so there's that, uh, I'm just not gonna go into further detail with that. However, um, they might actually form pair bonds, like monogamous relationships, which is very unusual in lizards. Um, I don't know if it has to deal with just the Komodo dragons being larger than average lizards, um, but it's a thing, so, as it is. So, like, they rip the crap out of each other, and then lay their eggs, and they're just like, okay, we're just gonna be together forever now, so, alright, that's, that's how that goes. Here's something else. Um, we already talked about how the adult Komodo dragons will actually eat their young. And we talked about this, and there's other animals that do that. But you don't understand how violent this is. 10% of an adult Komodo dragon's diet consists of baby Komodo dragons. 10% of their diet consists of cannibalizing their young. 10%! That's nothing to sneeze at! That's not like an insignificant amount! 10% of their diet, alright? So, for that reason, when a lot of Komodo dragons are born, they'll often, like, climb to the top of a tree when they're still light and, you know, the, the adults can't reach them all the way up there. So they'll live the first few years of their life, like, in the treetops, like, eating fruit and, like, insects. In fact, the, to the point where when researchers first discovered them, they originally assumed they were a different species altogether because you have the adult Komodo dragons on the ground in this, like, living in this one way, and then you have this other species of Komodo dragon. They're not another species. They're just, you know, young Komodo dragons living in trees and, like, eating insects. And, like, oh, is this a different species? It has to be. Their lifestyle is completely different. No, they're just doing that because they don't want to get eaten by the damn adults down there. Holy shit. And so, yeah, they, they literally have to live like this for years. Um, it's pretty crazy. The, the reason they think why Komodo dragons eat so many other Komodo dragons, why they cannibalize each other, is because the islands they live on uh, don't really have a lot of medium-sized prey. So the Komodo dragons are really big. Now, there are large prey like water buffaloes and shit, but like water buffaloes are like way bigger than them, okay? So in order to take down a water buffalo, like the Komodo dragon could do it, but it's going to take a lot of effort. There's not really a lot of prey that's like a medium size and like the perfect size for Komodo dragons, except for other Komodo Komodo dragons, so that's why they'll usually cannibalize each other in order to survive. Um, oh yeah, there's also a um, there's also a defense mechanism that young Komodo dragons will implement, where they will actually like go to a uh, the like the desiccated or like like do, like killed body of like a water buffalo or something, let's say, and they'll actually roll around in the intestines to get like you know shit all over them, so they're covered in shit, so that way the the adults won't eat them. You know what I mean? Because even though they like carrion, even though the Komodo dragons eat the decaying flesh of animals, they stay away from the intestines. They don't want to eat that. So they'll eat the rotting meat, but they're not going to eat that, okay? But it's just like they roll around it and like, ah, you can't eat me now. So it's like, yeah, the life of Komodo dragons, dude, pretty damn brutal. Pretty damn brutal. But uh, hey, we're learning stuff today, right? Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching signing out. Later, Bakugo.